This is section 11.2. We're going to continue working toward probability, but we're going to first continue working toward counting. And what we're going to look at in this section is called a permutation. A permutation is an ordered arrangement of items. In a permutation, no item is used more than once, and the order of the arrangement makes a difference. Okay? So once an item is used, it will not be used again. And it it might not matter to you if you have five shirts, which shirt is worn when. But if you are playing music and you have a playlist, the order might be very significant to you. So order matters when we're using permutations. Let's see how that affects things. Make this a little bigger. Number one. There are six performers who will present their comedy acts this weekend at a comedy club. How many different ways are there to schedule their appearances? All right. Now, I would think that it matters to a performer whether they are first or last. It's not just random. So, when you're talking about that the order matters, six performers, somebody gets to be first. And there are six possibilities of who could go first. For the second place, there are only five left. So there are only five ways to get the second spot build. Then there are four for the third, three for the fourth, two for the fifth, and there will be only one person left to fill that sixth spot. If you multiply those, you will get 720. Now, there's something kind of interesting about this. You could only, each performer was only going to perform once. The order did matter. This is called a permutation. There are 720 different ways that this could happen. This is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Each time it was one descending value. This is called 6 factorial. You might not have ever seen an exclamation point used in math before, but it is a notation. 6 factorial means 6 times all the step down numbers till you get to 1. Okay, let's see if maybe that will happen in some other problems. Number two, there are nine performers who will present their comedy acts this weekend at a comedy club. One of the performers insisted on being the last stand-up comic for the evening. If this performer's request is granted, how many different ways are there to schedule the appearances? All right. Well, if somebody is already slated to be last, then there are only eight choices of who's going first. And then seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. By taking one of the people out and saying, okay, you are automatically going to be last, then there were only eight to start with. Okay, so multiply that and it is 40,320. Let me go ahead and stop and show you something. If you recognize that this is eight factorial, then let's look at our calculator. Okay and I have this in your notes. If you go to the math button and you go to the right to the abbreviation for probability and you go down to the fourth one, you can either scroll down to there or you can just hit a four. 
you will get an exclamation point. Now, let me show you what happens. I choose four. I didn't have a number on my home screen, so I kind of messed up. So I'm, it just says, oh, you want me to do the factorial of whatever your last answer was. So I'm going to have to clear that. If I put in an eight, and now I do math, probability, choice number four. Now it says, and let me scoot this down. Eight factorial, press enter, and there is our number, 40,320. So you can multiply these out, or you can use the factorial if you recognize that you have generated a factorial. All right, let's look at number three. You need to arrange nine of your favorite books along a small shelf. How many different ways can you arrange the books, assuming that the order of the books makes a difference to you? Okay, something that makes, um, well, we'll talk more about when does order really matter, but you have nine ways, nine choices for the first position. There will only be eight for the second, then seven, then six, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one. So this is the same as nine factorial. Let's use our calculator to do that. Nine math to the right to probability, choose number four takes you back to the home screen with an exclamation point, which is the symbol for factorial. Enter. And we have 362,880. There are a lot of ways those nine books could be up there. All right, now, the author of your book thinks that you're going to do this problem a certain way. And I'm going to do it the way the author does, and then I'm going to show you how we could do it with our calculator. All right, 28 factorial divided by 24 factorial. Well, 28 factorial is such a huge number. This is what they say. If you've got two factorials, go to the big one and say that's 28 times 27 times 26, times 25, times, now it's going to be 24 and on. So you could stop and say times 24 factorial. So there was no reason to write out the 24 all the way down to 1. I just called it 24 factorial. And now that is divided by 24 factorial, and now those divide out. So this is much easier to handle because it is 28 times 27 times 26 times 25. So if I went to my calculator, I have 28 times 27 times 26, times 25, and that gives me 491,400. Now, that is a very nice shortcut. But I want to show you something that could actually be faster if you wanted it to be. All right, if I clear that off, if I take 28 math, one, two, three, scoot it over, that's 28 factorial divided by 24 math over to probability, this is 28 factorial divided by 24 factorial, 
and I get the same answer. Hmm. Well, it will probably show up twice in just a minute. No, it didn't show up at all. Oh well. So, you are welcome to use that factorial. Now, here is the definition and it says n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. There is a definition 0 factorial is equal to 1. That's just a definition. This next little state, oh, there is that item that I was wondering about and here it is again. There we go. You might want to make a notation of this on the TI-84. Go to the home screen, type in the number, hit math, go to PRB for probability, and then to the exclamation point. So that's what I did several times, but you may want to write that down. All right, now let's do some factorial problems. Several ways you could do them. The first one, you could say that's 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 times 20 times 19 factorial, and I stopped there because it's on the bottom, and it's over 19 factorial. Those cancel out, so I will simply multiply these numbers. So 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 times 20. And that gives me 5,100,480. The other way to do it, and I will probably start doing my problems this way, if I did 24, go to math, to probability, exclamation point, that's 24 factorial, divided by 19, math, probability, number 4, that's 24 factorial divided by 19 factorial, and there is the same answer. So from now on, I think I'll just do the factorials here on the calculator. Number 6. All right, I have, I'm going to clear this, I have 18 factorial, so math, That's 18 factorial divided by 11 math factorial. Enter. Wow. It is 160,392,960. And I'll go back and see if maybe this will work better this time. And I see it down here. Don't know why it's going in a new spot. And let's see if I can undo the things I've done. That really messed up, so I'll just move on. Number seven, I'm supposed to evaluate 408 factorial over 407 factorial. Now, honestly, it is going to be easier for me to do that without a calculator, because that is 408 times 407 factorial over, goodness, 407 factorial 
those cancel out and that is 408 and that was actually faster than doing all the factorials on the calculator. The next one, 105 factorial over 103 factorial. All right, so that is 105 times 104 times 103 factorial over 103 factorial. And if I multiply those two, I get 10,920. Now, I really haven't explained to you why we're doing all these factorials other than in, an, in these early problems, it seemed like we were generating some factorials. And we will see some more where we'll do that. All right, number nine. I think I will use the calculator just to practice a little bit. 7 factorial minus 2 factorial. All right, 7, math, number 4, that's 7 factorial, subtract, 2, math, factorial. And I get 5,038. There was no shortcut to that because it was not division. All right, in this one, I'm going to use a calculator, um, and I will do it exactly as the calculator says, but if I didn't get to use my factorial on my calculator, I would do what's in the parentheses first, and it would give me 5 so this is equal to 5 factorial, but so if I did 5 math, 5 factorial, I get 120. Now if I do parentheses, 8, subtract, 3, close parentheses, math, number 4, I still get 120. So either way I do this, I get 120. Number 11, 8 divided by 4, if I do what's in the parentheses, I get 2. And 2 factorial is 2 times 1 which is 2, and that's much easier than using the calculator at all. All right, we have one more factorial before we start talking about um, a different way to do permutations, and it is evaluate this factorial expression. Okay, do what's in the parentheses. That means that is 8 factorial over 8 minus 3 is 5 factorial. If I had to do this by hand, I would say that's 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial over 5 factorial. Those would divide out, and I'd have 8 times 7 times 6, and that would give me 336. All right, this is an important formula. Permutations of a certain number of things taken are at a time. Now, order still matters, but this is the number of possible permutations if R items are taken from N items, okay? So say you have 10 books, and they want to know how many different ways you can put five of those books on a shelf, and order matters. Or if you have the entire um, alphabet, how many different ways can you take five letters? Okay, where order matters. So this is coming up 
uh, number 13 is just like number 12. I think I'll do it. Um, I probably should have done it before I talked about this. I'm going to do it on the calculator. I have 9 math factory divided by open parentheses 9 minus 3 close math hit that three times and hit a four and we get 504 so before we actually do our permutations of n things taken r at a time it, this formula comes up and so we've practiced it we can do it this way or we can just type it into the calculator. All right, and now we're going to talk about permutations, and we can use the formula. If you have n items, take an r at a time, then it is n factorial over n minus r factorial. That's a formula. It's on your formula sheet. Or if you use the graphing calculator, you go to the home screen. Now this is important. You have to type in the n number first, then math, go over to probability, and choose NPR, and then type the R value. And I know I forget, and students tend to forget, that they have to type the n value first. How many is the big group that you're taking them from? All right, so let's practice. If we were using the formula for this, we would say that 6, the permutation of 6 taken 3 at a time is 6 factorial over parentheses 6 minus 3 factorial. And that is 6 factorial over 6 minus 3 is 3 factorial. So that's 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial over 3 factorial. Those cancel out. If you multiply, you get 120. All right, now let's do it with the graph calculator. All right, this is what we're looking at. Whoops, come back here. All right. We have to put our 6 first. Then we go F, 1, 2, 3. And you can see that NPR is number 2. Takes you back to the home screen. And now we type in the R value, which is 3. Hit Enter. And there's my 120. OK, so I can do it using the formula or I can use the calculator. And on the problem sets that you might have printed, number 15 for some reason is a repeat of 14, so that's silly, but let's go on. Let's practice with the NPR notation again using the calculator. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to put in 6, math, 1, 2, 3, go down, and I'm taking 6 items, and I'm taking them 6 at a time, and I will have 720 different ways to put those on a shelf, by using the example of putting on a shelf. All right, number 17. I want 14, math, 1, 2, 3, number 2, and I'm taking 14 items, hmm, 0 at a time. I will have 1. There's only one way to get nothing. All right, now let's look at some application problems. All right, we're finally going to look at a few application problems 
that show a little bit more about what this permutation notation, when is it actually used? All right, a club with five members is to choose three officers, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. If each office is to be held by one person and no person can hold more than one office, in how many ways can those offices be filled? All right, you have a total of five to choose from. Order matters because if you are president, then you cannot be vice president and so on. So it is five, permutation of five taken three at a time. So if I do that on my calculator, five, math, number two, three at a time. So how many different threes can I get out of this? And the order matters. I get 60. There are 60 different slates of officers. Let's look at number 19. For a segment of a radio show, a disc jockey can play 10 records. If there are 13 records to select from, in how many ways can the program for this segment be arranged? Well, we have 13 to choose from. Order matters, so we're looking at the permutation of 13 taken 10 at a time. So 13, math, choice two, 13, NPR, 10, Enter. Wow. That is, that is huge. So let's see. I think it is one billion, thirty seven million, eight hundred thirty six thousand, eight hundred. That's how many different ways there are to select 10 records when order matters out of the 13. Okay. In a race in which 10 automobiles are entered and there are no ties, in how many ways can the first three finishers come in? So there are 10 cars. How many different ways can they fin the first ones finish one, two, three? If I do that with my calculator, I will get 720. There are 720 different ways that could happen. All right, so permutations, I want to go all the way back. It is an ordered arrangement of items. No item can be used more than once, and the order of the arrangement makes a difference. When that's the situation, you're using a permutation, and we have formulas for n items taken r at a time. 